Good morning, Canada. Okay, here's tips we can all use. Well, between a rocky stock market and high inflation eating away at those cash savings, it might feel like there's no way to grow your cash. But that's where alternative investing comes in. Personal finance educator, the beautiful Kelly Keene, is back with amazing tips. Good morning, Kelly. How are you? Good morning, gorgeous Dina. Great to be with you talking about, like Sid said, top turvy markets. I think that's really technical. It really is. Listen, a lot of people are feeling like, what do I do? How do I make my money grow? You say alternative investments are key. So what are those? Yeah, this is definitely something to consider. So let me give you a really simplistic explanation of just investing. Let's say a friend of yours is at a resort town and says, Dina, you can invest in a company that sells umbrellas okay. or you can invest in one that sells suntan lotion. Which one do you choose? Now, one you're banking on how many rainy days and the other one how many sunny. It's not sunny when it's raining and vice versa. So the idea is, is that you would invest in both. That yes. is a very simplistic explanation of negative correlation, right? One thing's going up, the other thing's going down. You don't want to be in something everything's going up or down. Now, there's also a really boring hot dog stand over there that people are buying hot dogs, whether it's rainy or sunny. And that's kind of like your cash, right? Mm. Something that's super safe. Now, if you invest in more resorts and more countries, now you're getting more diversified. So that's like art, collectibles, wine, real estate, and private equity that we can all talk about. Yeah, let's get into that. So first of all, who knew? You have a story about Steve Martin when he was uh, young and at 21. He was ahead of the curve when it comes to arts and collectibles. Yeah, my husband's been telling me about this for years. He's obsessed with actors. He was in the film industry, and he was telling me that, yeah, at such a young age, Steve Martin was, you know, collecting art, and so much so that in 2001, he actually had his collection exhibited uh, in Vegas. So uh, definitely something to think about. Uh, if you love art, not only do you get the utility of it, meaning that you get to enjoy the beauty of it in your home, but, Dina, we're not talking about fads here. I know you had the Beanie Babies up before the yeah. commercial break. We're talking about well-researched pieces of art that, yes, you can enjoy, but the idea is that it's going to go up in value. You need to do your research. You need to know who your end uh, market is. Who are you going to sell this to? And remember, there are a lot of fees when it comes to selling your art later on so you want to make sure that you have your eyes wide open when you're looking at that asset class yes cal do your research invest wisely because somebody might just be selling you a lemon or whatever and with collectibles same thing if it's out of the package or the package is ruined there's different rules right fine exactly. wine if you can stop yourself from drinking it <laughs> you say <laughs> there can be an investment there right Yes, so that would be a problem for me collecting it on my own. So a little distance is great. And there are a number of companies that are offering that distance because I'm sure a lot of people have seen that Netflix uh, uh, film on, you know, how much fraud there is in the wine industry. Yeah. Now there's companies doing that vetting for you. They house it, they research it, they assure that it's it's legit. Uh, and you know, you can get in for a reasonable amount. So if, you know, you love wine, it can be as effortless to invest in it as it is to drink it. Okay, real estate, what to do? Because there's so much mixed advice out there. Yeah, there's a, a few companies coming into big markets, especially like Toronto, that are offering like an advanced rent to own option. There's mm -hmm. always been kind of like these private rent to own deals with individual landlords. But now there's more structured ones out there that not only let you take a portion of what you're paying towards your rent, so you actually feel like you're building some ownership, even though if you don't have that down payment, they even have flexibility where you can access your equity if you need to get out and you don't have the hassles of selling. So if you think that home ownership is just a dream that's never going to happen, uh, it could just be a possibility with these new innovative companies that are coming out. Okay. Lastly, private equity. What do we need to know? Okay. So keep in mind, all the things we've been talking about do not exist on a stock market. That's what makes them a little bit more risky. You have to do a lot more research. Now, let's say you took two companies and all things being equal, one is on a stock market, one is private. It's not on a stock market you should get what's called an illiquidity discount. It means that it's not liquid. You can't easily just go and sell it. So in theory, you should actually be able to earn more in the long term going into private equity. But your eyes have to be wide open. You have to do your research. You have to be able to handle that type of risk 
because you may not get your money back for a long time. So you can see there's a lot more complexity with alternative investments and there's so many more than we talked about, but they definitely deserve at least your attention, especially when you're seeing what's happening with the stock market. Listen, a lot of light bulbs turning on right now. Thank you for letting us tap into that brilliant brain of yours. For more information, Kelly, you can check her out on Instagram at Kelly Keen Biz and check out how it's spelled because you'll notice it's K-E-L-L-E-Y, K-E-E-H-N, Biz, B-I-Z, or on her website, Kelly Keen. Dot com. Always keen to learn more. Love to you. Thanks Thank so much, Cal.